So in this video, we're going to talk about the three ways you can now declare variables in JavaScript. So for the longest time, the only way we had to declare variables was with the var keyword. Uh, so I'm going to make a new file called variables.js. So if we wanted to make something like foo, for example, we could do var foo equals uh, and then you know put whatever value we want in there. And so for those that aren't familiar, variables declared with the var keyword have what's called function scope. And so basically you can think about that as uh, it can be reached by anything. It's, you know, it's contained only till the, the function keyword above it. Um, so if you have something like this, foo is accessible inside the function, not outside the function. But where that's confusing for some people is they come from languages with block scope. And so block scope would be like, let's say you have an if block inside here. Um, you know, you're like if you know, one plus one is equal to two, or something like that, right? Um, and now you go ahead and you move foo inside here. Foo is not contained to this if block at all. Foo is contained to the function. Um, and then the other thing that's tricky about these function scopes is that if you forget the var keyword and you just declare foo like this, and you don't have strict mode on, foo will keep bouncing up until it hits the window or the global object, um, and then you have global scope. So previously those were really the only two scopes that we had in JavaScript were uh, function scope when you declare it with var, or global scope if you don't declare var or if you pin something to the global. So now we've got these kind of three options here. So we can do uh, var foo equals you know, foo. We can also do let bar equals bar and then lastly we can do const baz equals baz and so the basic ideas here just to keep it really together is um, a lot of people are in favor now of no longer using var um, you know so it's the original one uh, it'll be left you know forever because we can't ever break the web um, and it's got you know that function scope and now let comes along, uh, and let has all the same properties as bar, uh, you know, similar to uh, var, except it's block scope. So like we talked about before, you can put a let inside like an if condition, um, and it'll be scoped to that condition. And then lastly, we have const um, cannot be reassigned. So this is basically the deal here. Um, a lot of people just to go off for a second, have made the claim that const is immutable, uh, and that is actually not true. Uh, the, the big thing with const is if you have, well, I guess let's do an example here. So we'll start with const. Um, so if we do const foo equals first thing, and then we do you know foo equals second thing. So this would work fine with bar. Uh, if we go ahead down here and we console log foo, um, if we had used the var keyword, this would log second thing. But since we're using the const keyword, if we go ahead and run node on variables.js, we'll still see it is the first thing. And this is because it cannot be reassigned. However, that does not make it immutable. Because if we did something like this, const foo equals, let's say, some kind of object, and the object has a key of you know, one, which is uh, hello. Uh, and it also has a key of two, which itself is an object, and that has a key of three, something like that, which is goodbye. Uh, so this is a bit of a goofy looking object, but the point still stands that if you take something like this, you can't reassign foo, right? So you can't do foo equals uh, goodbye, or something like that. That won't work because const can't be reassigned. However, it's not immutable in the sense that uh, it can't be redeclared, but the th keys that it has can be. So then you could do something like foo.2, which is an object, um, or even foo.2.3, right? And you could set that to uh, not goodbye, right? And then you can go ahead and console log foo. And if we go out here and run node on variables.js, we'll see that <clears throat> three has actually been mutated to not goodbye. So do be careful. It's not immutable programming if you're using const. If you really want to be doing immutable programming, you should check out my series on Facebook's immutable JS. Uh, they have all the data structures that you'll need for that. But you can still see the value in const in that it can't be reassigned, uh, which a lot of people just feel makes your code a lot cleaner. You know, if you're going to declare it, only declare it once. 
So now that we have a good handle on what const is, let's just talk really quick through the differences between let and var because they're a bit confusing. Um, so the MDN has this kind of cool idea for these for these tests, and I'll cover them here. So let's say we have function uh, var test, and then later we have function let test. And this will just compare the subtle differences. So in var test, we could do something like var foo equals true, right? And then later we could have like this if block in our code, you know, like if true, whatever. Um, and we could reset var, right? So we could set um, var foo, and we can set it to false now. Uh, and then we can con console.log foo. And we'll go through this before, uh, before we get too far. And then we can console.log foo. OK, so basically what's going on here is that this function starts, and we declare a variable named foo. We set its value to true. Then later in an if block, we try to redeclare foo. This is a really common gotcha from function scoping, because people would think that you can redeclare new variables in here, but they aren't block scoped. They're scoped to the parent function. So these two foos conflict with each other, and the JavaScript engine just decides, you know, there's no new variable to make. It just resets this foo to the value of this foo. So when we console log foo here, it'll be false, which is not surprising. But what people might be surprised by is when we console log foo here, it is still false. It's actually been permanently changed to false. So if we run var test like this, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that for now. And we'll go out here and we'll run it with node. And we see that false is logged twice. So that's kind of where let comes into play, where this would be like a very common thing that could be tricky for people. So then what we can do here is we can go ahead and we can change var test to let test. I'll do that uh, down here as well. Let test. And now we can declare foo with uh, let instead of true, or instead of var. And then inside our if block, we can use let again. So now since both of these are block scoped, which you can think about as being scoped to the nearest open bracket, right? So they're scoped to here. These are two totally different variables. So if we log this foo block scoped, it will be false. But now when we log this foo block scoped, it'll actually be true. So I'll go ahead and save that and run node on variables.js. Oh, right. As I did cover before, but I forgot immediately. Uh, const is fully supported in node but um, in order to use uh, let inside node you're going to have to put node in strict mode and so we can just go back into our file here and at the very top we can just put use strict and now go run node on variables so we'll see just like we talked about the first one is is a new variable set to false but the original let variable is kept as true so hopefully that kind of helps you understand the difference between the three. I think you'll start seeing big wins for let everywhere in your code base that you've been passing around. Like, you know, whenever you lose scope in your code base, so you like pass in, like, you know, you would do like var that equals this or something like that, right? Or like, you know, you would, you would be uh, changing things out or passing them into functions because you're worried about losing scope. Um, these are really great places to check out lap because since it blocks scopes, it'll behave a lot more predictably.